Do you have any idea what lies beneath the Sahara Desert? There's no easy way to say this, but what you've been told about the Sahara Desert up until now has been a big, fat lie. From all the documentaries, the books, the movies, and the 1999 heart-wrenching song Desert Rose, the mainstream media would have you believe that the desert is an unconventional wasteland, and it's incredibly hot, there's no rain, and there you'll find oceans and oceans of sand. But deserts come in many different types and forms. A desert can be hot or cold, pebble or sand, and places like the Sahara are best described as a hot desert. If you called Antarctica a desert, you would be correct. And even places like Chile and Peru are not hot, but cold deserts. And as for the sand, that's just a small portion of the desert. Take the Sahara for example. Only 20% of this desert is actually covered in sand. So. What can you find in a desert, specifically the Sahara? Well, scientists have been curious about this issue, desperate for any answer they could find. Their curiosity caused them to make fascinating discoveries below the desert surface. The Sahara Desert is the biggest, hottest desert on Earth, spanning over 9.2 million kilometers. Just so you get a better idea, that's equivalent to the entirety of the United States of America, including Alaska. The Sahara is so big that it has about 10 countries in its grip, and as we said earlier, 20% of what you'll see in the Sahara is sand. And it was underneath those sands that scientists found something interesting. They found evidence of two mega lakes, lakes that were vibrant and thriving about 250,000 years ago. What is a mega lake, you may ask? Generally, lakes are considered to be still bodies of water, with land all around it. Hence, a mega lake is a very large body of water surrounded by land. As you can imagine, the discovery of a lake in the Sahara was definitely a surprise. Keep in mind that deserts are thus named either due to extreme heat or cold. This extreme temperature makes a land unable to hold moisture. The closest lake ever discovered near the Sahara was Lake Chad, and that's in Central Africa. So the Sahara should not be able to house that much water. So how come there are signs of a prehistoric mega lake far beneath the surface? Well, thanks to the examination and location of fossil fish found miles away from the Nile, scientists were able to find an 810-foot sea level marker that suggested that the Nile actually flooded the region and created the lake. This lake covered about 247 miles. That's almost as big as Lake Michigan, one of the biggest lakes in the world. They also found another lower level lake about 623 feet above sea level and 93 miles west of the Nile and this particular lake covered an area of 197 miles. Thanks to radar technology, scientists have also been able to find the ancient water channel that flowed into an oasis, all the way from the Nile. This helped to calculate the course of which the water flowed from the Nile and how it fed into the lake. The water channel, namely the Burka Seba Tushka water channels, was discovered 50 feet beneath the surface thanks to the team of Ted Maxwell, a geologist from the National Air and Space Museum. Their discoveries helped to support and cement the all-too-popular belief that not only was the Sahara a reservoir for large amounts of water, but it was also richly covered in copious amounts of vegetation thousands of years ago. This means that the climate conditions of the Sahara were convenient enough to support life in extremely large quantities, with trees that fed into forests, fields of grass, and a variety of wildlife and vegetation. It wasn't too long ago that this whole expanse of green disappeared from the surface of the Sahara and was buried within the sands of time. Why did that happen? Well, the Sahara stopped being green due to a shift in the Earth's tilt around the sun. Basically, the Earth went from being further from the sun to being closer to the sun, and this led to a change in solar radiation and an increase in heat. This, in turn, meant an increase in evaporation and the reduction in rainfall, hence the gradual loss of all of that water. It also caused a fluctuation in temperature, which, if you understand anything about plants, is not a good thing. Plants need a consistent temperature range to thrive. The Sahara region supplied fluctuating temperatures, because during the day it would be fairly close to the sun, indicating intense heat. But at night, it would be fairly far away from the sun, indicating intense cold. No sane plant would be able to survive these unstable conditions, so they started to die out. And as the plants died out, the water dried up, and any animal who didn't want to migrate to favorable territories died, either from the intense climate or from starvation. Gradually, the Sahara became the wasteland you see today. This happened about 8,000 years ago, after the end of the Ice Age. But what about the sand? 
Where did it all come from? Well, that, my friend, is due to the effect of erosion, specifically wind. As the Earth rotates, it causes strong winds kind of how you feel strong winds on the surface of your car when you're driving fast. These winds eventually come into contact with rocks, or what the pedologist terms parrot material. This parrot material has been weakened due to the effects of the temperature. The rocks started to crack and split, and as the wind met these splitting rocks, well, they started to form a great deal of sand over a thousand years. And that's how we got the mega dunes you see in some parts of the desert today. Fun fact, this is one of the ways that the soil you step on and plant your seeds in is formed. It's called the weathering process, and it takes a very long time to happen, and even longer before it's able to support life. This is also why you shouldn't take soil conservation for granted. Ancient water structures aren't the only things under the Sahara. One discovery that's important to note is the ghost city of Timgad, which was buried in the sand over a thousand years ago. Timgad was an 18th century city of the Roman Empire that was discovered in Algeria in the 1950s. It's one of those places that really denotes the sophistication of a Roman settlement. With its orthogonal grid system and Corinthian colonnade linings, it's indicative of a fundamental grid system that you'd see in a modern city like New York. But this grid in Timgad is one of the oldest in the world, and it was buried underneath the Sahara for over a millennium. Timgad was originally meant to be a retirement settlement for veterans who couldn't afford to return home to Rome. It had a bit of diversity, consisting of Romans, Africans, and other cultures, particularly Berbers. The city was founded in 100 AD by Emperor Trajan, and he did his best to make it look like a classic Roman city. The city looks incredible, especially when viewed from above. And what's even more spectacular is the fact that the entire city covers an area of approximately 50 hectares, with high pillars and columns, amphitheaters, as well as houses and temples, which were all buried in the sand. It's unclear what time in history the burying occurred, but it is amazing when you think about it. Makes you wonder what other secrets are hidden in the Sahara. If you've been paying close attention to Egypt in the last century, and the century before that, you'll know that archaeologists and Egyptologists have discovered a host of pyramids and sphinxes all over the Sahara. And what's unbelievable is the fact that there are more of these ancient structures left to be discovered in the Sahara. Monuments buried deep within the desert, made up by the ancient rulers and settlers of Egypt, and perhaps the ones that are left to be discovered, are not as grand as the Great Pyramid of Giza, but still, it will be a fascinating discovery. Other things that have been discovered underneath the Sahara are bones or fossils from long-lost creatures in history. Most recently are the fossils of dinosaurs from the family of the pterosaur, which is basically a dinosaur with a beak and a sauropod, one of those huge herbivores with long necks. What's fascinating is the fact that these dinosaur species are new and have never been discovered before. So it was a moment of joy when Nazir Ibrahim and his team discovered the fossils in Algeria. Having such a pristine specimen in good conditions were more than they could hope for after a long and arduous trip into Sahara. Another notable discovery is the Whale Valley, which is also known as the Wadi al Hitan, which houses a large collection of whale fossils, which were discovered in the western desert of Egypt a few miles from Cairo. The remains are those of the ancestors of whales known as the Archaeoceti, which are believed to be a group of whales who had lost their hind limbs and transferred from being land dwellers to water dwellers. Paleontologists argue that the fossils indicate a pivotal time in evolutionary history, and they help us to understand the details of the iconic stories of evolution. And not only that, it also helps us to recreate stimulated environments of those times, which improve our study. But surely that's not all that's been discovered underneath the Sahara. Fix your eyes not on the sands or what's within, but on the stars in the skies above. Because there's also been a discovery of meteorites and huge rocks that fell from space and scattered themselves all over the desert. The most notable example is desert glass, which is believed to be glass formed as a result of a meteorite. It doesn't exist anywhere else on the planet, and is commonly found around Libya. Desert glass is a prominent mineral in history, often used by the Egyptians in making sculptures, for example. It was a minor component in the creation of King Tut's mask. Isn't it extremely mind-boggling to consider the amazing discoveries we've made in the Sahara? From the Mega Lake to the Lost Cities to the fossils and the meteorites, it all accumulates to give us a sense of our rich history and where we're coming from. How about that?